Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Tiny Talks. I am freaking pumped to chat with you all. I just finished making some Christmas cookies, listening to some music, did a little workout, and I just kept thinking these thoughts over and over again during that time. And so I wanted to come on here and share that with you all. And so today's episode is going to be all about why it's so important to check in with yourself, especially in the aspect of making it a habit. And so in saying that, I'm going to give some tactical ways to actually check in with your physical and emotional needs, some self-care prompts that we can give for ourselves, actually how to check in with ourselves and why that's so important. And so this is something that I've been kind of contemplating talking about for a while, but I didn't really feel like I was at a place yet to be able to talk about this. So if you've been following along my journey for a while, you know that I made the move from Alberta to New Brunswick back in July. And so during that time, I, reflecting back now, didn't realize, but I was very much operating in a survival state. And so I look back, everything feels very much on autopilot. Like I was just going with the motions, but wasn't really there mentally. And my logical brain wasn't online very often. And this typically happens when our body are just overwhelmed and they want to disconnect us. And so to kind of make that um, make sense for you folks listening, I want you to think of a time that maybe you were driving to work or to the grocery store or whatever it is, and you just remember getting to your destination and you're like, whoa, I don't really remember the drive here. I don't really remember how I got here, but I just got here. So basically we like to refer to that as something called dissociation. And so basically what that means is when something is too overwhelming for our body and mind to cope, it simply drifts us away into our thoughts. We're kind of in our head, we're out of our body and we're not there logically, physically, emotionally, right? We're kind of like floating. And so for honestly four months, I would largely say I was in a frequent dissociative state. I felt like I was numb a lot of the times. I couldn't identify my emotions. Everything was just super, super overwhelming. And this is a very large and common way to respond to trauma. And so although I didn't have anything specific traumatic happen in the last four months, there was a lot of things going on. I had got out of a three-year relationship. I had moved three times in a matter of a month. I was removing friends from my life and setting boundaries. I had quit my job. I was unemployed. There was just a lot of things that happened very, very quickly. And so although those specific things aren't going to resonate with everybody, sometimes we go through phases and sometimes it can be something traumatic that triggers that for us. Sometimes it can just be the weight of the world right now with all the news that we see and which is why it's so important to really minimize the amount of information that we're putting into our heads that are negative because that is naturally going to cause our brain to go in panic mode, survival mode, overwhelm us, cause us to be in a dissociative state. And so I was living in that mind space for a while now and why I said I didn't want to talk about this yet, although it has been on my mind, is because now that I've incorporated these daily check-ins with myself and these daily things, I feel like I'm better able to speak from not only experience, but also having worked in the trauma recovery world, having a pretty large understanding of this. But when you're actually going through the motions, it's really hard to give those tactical reasons. And so I'm so proud of myself for even just getting to this point that I'm able to talk to you about all of this. And so Really, the first thing that I want to talk about is how to check in with yourself. Because if we are going day to day through the motions and we are not taking that intentional time to check in with ourselves, we could potentially be allowing our body to prolong emotions day after day after week after month until it gets to a point where we feel like we're in a rut, we feel like the world is crashing down on us, and that typically happens when we suppress things and suppress things and then they all come up at once. And I know that I'm also very guilty of that and I'm learning to have better self-care routines and check-ins with myself so I don't get like that volcano that erupts when life and everything becomes too heavy. And so the first way that really you can check in with yourself is to identify your triggers and that could be internal and external triggers. 
And so this is something that's taken me weeks, months to figure out even what some of my potential triggers are. So external triggers would be things like physical places, people, thoughts that we have, things around it, or sorry, not thoughts, things in our environment, maybe things people say to us. That could be smells, some things that we don't even recognize. So a trigger could be any of our five senses. So things that we can see, smell, taste, touch, and hear. Any of those can lead into a trigger, which can trigger off our fight or flight and send us into that state of fight, flight, or freeze. Internal cues are something such as hunger, tired, angry, lonely, right? There's that acronym HALT for a reason. If we're checking in with ourselves and we're able to ask ourselves, am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I tired? What am I needing right now? Having that intention. So that was something huge for me when beginning to do check-ins with myself is starting with that. What are the things that I know trigger me? right? That's a really, really great place to start. And I do want to encourage you that if you are starting this, it's so important to not get frustrated with yourself. Because that's also something that I've been dealing with where something will happen, I'll have an anxiety response, I'm someone who shuts down and goes inwards into my body. And sometimes it can be really frustrating when we can't identify what a trigger is. And so the second point that I have on here is to journal. And so whenever I notice a trigger or I'm able to pinpoint something that has happened, I will go and I'll write it down. What was I doing? Who was I with? What were the sounds? Was I eating something? Was there music playing? What was happening in my physical environment that made that switch to happen? So that's huge for me. And journaling could also just be every single morning when you wake up or every night before you go to bed, whatever resonates more with you, writing down whatever's coming to your mind. What is stressing you out? What's great about your day? What was bad about your day? What do you want to have your intention for for tomorrow? What would you reflect on for today, right? Any of those questions that we can ask ourselves. And at the end of this, I am going to give us, or sorry, you guys, some physical and emotional cues that we can ask ourselves as well as some self-care cues that we can ask ourselves. And so again, I just want to come back to this point super quick as I kind of jambled over there a little bit. But this, the thing that's so important about our mind is oftentimes we like to section our body into parts, right? We have our arm and our leg and our toes and our fingers and our head and our heart, right? We like to place everything into little sections. But if you really think physically about the human body, absolutely everything in your body and my body and everybody's body is connected it works together one thing that i learned last year that really just proved this to me even though i knew it was true but just kind of made it all make sense was that most of our emotions and our chemical balances actually come from our gut health so meaning the the health of our gut is what then fluctuates our brain and our emotions Isn't that cool? I didn't realize that until I learned. And when I learned that, I started to look at my body as one being instead of different parts, right? Because our brain communicates with our body the same as our body communicates with our brain. Everything is connected. And so now in saying that, if we think about going to the gym and working out, what are we working out? We're working out our body, right? We think that that's very good for us. That's glorified. That's talked about. But why is it that we never talk about working out the brain? Because working out the brain and doing these check-ins and doing these intentional ways of recognizing our emotions is the exact same as working out our body, right? We're beginning to be proactive and one step ahead of our brain and so that we are controlling our thoughts instead of our thoughts controlling us, right? So I just wanted to backtrack to that for a moment because that was something that I wasn't doing. I wasn't working out my mind. I wasn't checking in with my mind. And a large reason for that that I do want to highlight is because it can be really scary. Right? Our mind can tell us a lot of scary, harsh, cruel, brutal things. And it gets those thoughts and it tries to make them a reality by telling us that over and over and over again. And so that's why if you're beginning on this journey and you're new to this, to be gentle with yourself. Right? If it's just a small check-in that you're doing to start, that's wonderful. We start to train that. That's the same as going to the gym and going right to squatting 200 pounds. 
that might not be realistic for everybody, especially if you haven't been going to the gym. It's the same with our mind. We can't just jump right in and expect to have all these positive affirmations and to just feel so much better and like all of our trauma is gone, right? I wish that it worked like that and I wish that it was that simple, but unfortunately it's not, but that's okay. That's what makes the journey beautiful in that you're being intentional and actually wanting to get mentally better, which is, I think, a beautiful thing. And so in saying that, that is typically why I think mental health is not talked about because it takes work. It's scary, right? can be scary. Let me correct that. It's a beautiful thing, but it can be scary. So being gentle with yourself. How am I feeling? How much am I willing to do today? Maybe tomorrow I can go a little bit deeper, right? And so beginning with those identifying your triggers, internal and external, and journaling is a really great place to start. And also another thing that I like to do that's super helpful is most folks when they wake up in the morning, they go to the bathroom. They either go to use the washroom or to brush your teeth or to shower, whatever it is. Most folks go into the washroom. One thing that I have found extremely helpful, especially in the beginning of wanting to check in with myself, is putting a little sticky note, a sticky note reminder on my mirror that says, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? And for me, that was really hard in the beginning, especially when I was extremely dissociated. So I did it on a scale of one to 10. How am I feeling on a scale of one to 10? That to me was attainable. I could do that. Now for some folks, if that is even too overwhelming, something that is all, all, the sorry, (laughs) also helpful is Googling circle of emotions. It's basically this big wheel chart that says a bunch of premier and secondary emotions that you can then look at. So instead of just feeling angry, maybe it's feeling frightened or lonely or a deeper emotion that goes along with that anger. So if you're finding it hard to identify an emotion, sometimes looking at a chart is helpful to be able to see other things. And I will link that in the show notes below so you guys can check that out because it's super, super helpful. All right. So we covered identifying triggers, external and internal journaling and sticky note. The next thing I have that I'm sure you guys all knew was coming, and I want you to just stick with me while I share this. And so that is to meditate. And that isn't to sound woo-woo or to sound like meditating fixes everything. And when I say meditate, I simply just mean going into your mind for even 30 seconds, two minutes. And again, whatever feels safe to you, this doesn't have to be on your first day of checking in. This could be a little bit into your journey but closing your eyes for a moment and just trying to find stillness and quietness. And one thing that I found helpful in the beginning was closing my eyes, grabbing some essential oils, taking some intentional deep breaths. I would place my left hand on my heart and my right hand on my stomach. And the way that you know you're taking a deep breath is when you inhale, you can feel your stomach rise. If you don't feel your stomach rising, you're likely doing a shallow breath, which is actually triggering our stress response even more, which then produces cortisol and all those other things that trigger our fight, flight, and freeze. So we want to really be intentional with taking those large, deep breaths, okay? So once I kind of got there, I was able to take some deep breaths, lower my heart rate. I would start at my crown chakra, so the top of my head if you're unfamiliar with chakras. So that's pretty much the roof of your head. And I would just bring all my focus and my energy to that. And the thing about meditating in the beginning is thoughts are going to come, right? We can't just shut it off like a television. They've been there all day. They've been there all our life. We can't just make them go away. And so it's important to be gentle with ourselves and let thoughts come, let thoughts pass, refocusing your energy. Focus on the top of your head. What do you feel there? Move down your third eye between your eyes. What are you noticing there? Your throat, your throat chakra. Are you noticing anything there? Bring your energy there. Your heart chakra. What are you noticing in your chest? Is your heart beating faster than it should be? Have you noticed yourself calming down? Right, and so on and so forth. Moving down. Your solar plexus chakra, your root chakra, right? Moving down to your glutes, your knees, your legs, your toes. Going head to toe, I found extremely, extremely helpful because I was able to connect my whole body and my brain together 
without it being excruciatingly overwhelming. And then oftentimes after that, I would say some of the following quotes to myself. And again, do whatever resonates with you. But I would ask myself, what do I need in this moment? What is my body needing? How am I feeling today? What are my emotional needs right now? What's taking up most of my headspace right now? Do I feel physically and emotionally safe right now? How do I feel about myself right now? How can I be gentle with myself? So those are questions that I've liked to journal about often. And a huge one there, the first one pretty much was, how am I feeling today? What comes to mind? Is it a good feeling? Is it an excited feeling? Is it sad? Is it angry? Awesome. Let's learn to thank our body for communicating that emotion with us. That is getting the brain-body connection back online. I'm feeling happy today. Awesome. What's my intention for today? I'm going to have a really good day. I'm going to make two people smile. Amazing. Right? That is a great, great place to start. I'm feeling really crummy today. Okay. What's something that I know that kind of lifts my vibe a little bit? Is it dancing? Is it singing? Is it a low day today where I just need to feel through my emotions? Do I need a hug right now? Do I need something to eat right now? Am I dehydrated? Do I need some water? You can see how one little question we ask ourselves can then trickle into so many other things. But if we don't ask ourselves that question, we're allowing our body to try to figure that out for itself, which it can do to some aspect. However, it's so much better if we check in with ourselves. And I'll just give a little example for myself. I was suffering with migraines. I've pretty much suffered with migraines my whole life. It began with it being fragrance related and toxic chemicals. Once I ditched those out of my life, I was still having migraines, figured out it was coming from my eyes. I got glasses. They went away for a little bit. And then when all this stuff started to happen, I noticed that my migraines were back. And thinking back and just knowing what I know about the brain, I can now connect that my migraines were A, from dehydration, and B, from me not checking in with my mind. And so in turn, my mind was giving me all these physical pains to signal, hey, you need to check in with me, right? And I've kind of been like that my whole life, where almost every single day I have something that just hurts or aches or isn't quite right, or my digestion or just something is off. And I'm learning now that that was my body's way of giving me physical symptoms in my body because my sympathetic system was so thrown off, right? And so it's important to do those check-ins. Okay, I have a headache. All right, have I eaten? Have I drank anything? Have I slept? How are my eyes? What's my screen time, right? Going deeper of why we're feeling the things that we're feeling. All right. The next one that I have on here, you guys, is to focus on your breath, which I chatted about a little bit with meditation, but focusing on your breath. Have you been deep breathing? Have you been shallow breathing? Have you been holding your breath? I know when I'm stressed, I'm so guilty of holding my breath, shallow breathing. That is upping your heart rate. That is upping your cortisol. Your stress response is going, right? Your logical part of your brain is offline. Your body's working so much harder than it has to. Exhaustion typically kicks in, right? It's this whole cycle that we go through. So bringing awareness to your breath as much as you can is so, so important. And the last point that I have on here for how to check in with ourselves is to practice gratitude. And this is something that I have found extraordinarily helpful in my life. Every single morning I wake up before I even roll out of bed. And again, this has become a routine, so it just happens naturally now before I did my little sticky note trick. But what am I grateful for? Three things quickly. That is starting your brain off and your day off with three things that you're grateful for right off the bat, right? It's allowing your brain right off the get-go to start finding those things you're grateful for, looking for the good in the day. The more that we practice gratitude, the more that our mind starts to find those things that we're grateful for, puts them in front of us, right? It's the same as our level of frequency that we operate at that I chatted about in my last episode. If we are practicing gratitude and finding gratitude, in return, gratitude is naturally going to find us as well. So find and practice that gratitude 
Do it right now. I encourage you. Find three things right now, quickly on the top of your head that you're grateful for. Right now, I'm grateful for my dog cuddling beside me. I'm grateful that I just made some Christmas cookies and I'm so excited to spend time with my family. And I'm so excited that I have a new job that I'm absolutely loving. Boom. Five seconds. That's it. So now that we have some of those tactical things that we can identify and ways that we can check in, you might be thinking, Jesse, okay, that's wonderful. How the heck do I can, can I remember to do that? Like, where do I get started? And that's exactly where I was at before. And which is why, again, I'm glad that I waited to do this episode because now that I've been practicing these things and I found ways to help hold me accountable, I'm able to now share that with you. So the first one that I expressed with you guys already is sticky notes. Sticky notes, sticky notes, sticky notes. Put those babies everywhere. Stick them in your car, stick them in your wallet, stick them on your walls, on your mirrors, anywhere. They don't ruin anything. They're easily removed to change. But you can have such an impactful message right there in front of you that you don't have to think about. It's already there doing the check-in for you. Right? So sticky notes. Second one that I have on here that I still have on my phone every couple of hours is to create a reminder that simply says, how am I feeling right now? And I find that the most helpful, especially when I'm in the run of the day at work and I am kind of on that go, go, go. My mind's kind of offline and focused on something else. Bringing that intention back to myself as much as I can to ask how I'm doing. Because if I'm getting to a point of burnout or exhaustion and I'm no good to myself, I'm not going to be good to anybody else or those around me. So creating a reminder for me was extremely, extremely helpful. And the last one that I have on here that might be helpful for you, I haven't yet experienced with this. However, I think it could be really helpful. And that's to find an accountability buddy. Find someone that you want to check in with daily. Maybe you already have someone that you text every single day. When you ask each other, how are you doing? Make sure it's an intentional check-in. Have you checked in with yourself today? This is how I'm feeling, right? Oftentimes, if we have that external support and validation that we don't have to go through everything alone, it can also just help our system feel supported and trust that we're not alone. We have support. We don't have to go through this again alone, which is huge, especially when we're going through all the emotions and things. And so those are some really incredible ways to check in with yourselves. And again, I know that this sounds like a lot of work and a lot of information, but after a while, this really just does become second nature. The same as being stuck in those funks or that dissociation or that stress response becomes your normal. This can also become your normal. It takes work. It takes time. It takes commitment. But I'm telling you right now with every ounce of me that if I can do it, absolutely anybody can do this. For me, it took getting help and support from family, from friends, from professional mental health professionals. And if that's what that looks like for you as well, just know that you are worthy of that. Mental health and mental illness and just life in general can be heavy. It can be hard. It can be challenging. But you don't have to go through it alone. One thing I keep reminding myself of is I don't have to pretend to be okay all the time. I don't have to pretend like I'm so tough all the time because I'm not. I am just as emotional and fragile as anybody else. I have gone through things. You have gone through things. They have shaped who we are today. And I want you to ask yourself right now in this present moment of how you're living for today. Right now. Not for yesterday. Not for two weeks ago. Not for a year from now or in a week or waiting till the new year. What are you going to do for yourself right now? How are you feeling right now? now. The more that we can live in the now, the more that our body is able to be grounded and present. And the more that we can be grounded and present, the easier mindfulness and checking in with yourself becomes. I truly, truly hope that you found this helpful. I truly hope that you all have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. I'm so excited to be back chatting with you guys. As always, I will leave any links or things that I chat about in the show notes below, so feel free to check those out. And I look forward to chatting with you all very soon. Take care, everyone.